Have you ever traveled all the way across the country to buy a car sight unseen? I doubt it, but that's what we're doing today. We have traveled all the way to the East Coast in Connecticut to look at a car that really piqued my interest. We're about five minutes out from my friend Tommy's shop where we have just got our car dropped off. Now, I haven't fully purchased this car yet, and we're gonna be analyzing it and seeing it today because truth be told, this car isn't perfect. It actually was in an accident at a racetrack. From the photos that I've seen and from what I've been told, it doesn't look that bad, but you don't always get the full story through someone else's words. So it's very important that before we pull the trigger and I get myself into another big project, that the car is exactly how it was described. We're a couple minutes out, my nerves are high, I start to get excited, and I brought along all my boys because you guys know me just as well as they do, and when I get excited, I make stupid decisions. And sometimes those stupid decisions turn into stupid financial decisions. So hopefully they can keep me on my toes and keep my head in the right place so I don't make the bad move. And here we are, a place that we have been many, many times before. I can't believe you uh, drove down this inferior vehicle. Oh, I can't believe. It doesn't look that bad, Dude. but I... I I gotta be smart today. I'm not gonna say a word. That's the primary part of it, is just that rear. It's the gapping and I, uh, I don't know. The front's a little hammered. Oh, I guess we could we could push it from here, I think. You're smiling too much. It's I, soul, baby. That's why I have that's why I have them here to keep me in line. Yeah, hey, why don't you go back inside? We got shit to look at. Help you look at it. <laughs> yep, that's right. A 997 GT3. This car specifically has been a bucket list car for me. I knew I was going to own one, but it was just a matter of when. I recently drove this car and it left me with a feeling I couldn't shake, and it made this an absolute must have for myself. The Porsche 997 GT3 debuted in 2006, outshining all of their competitors. And in my opinion, it was the best car they ever made. Yes, this car is wrecked. It has damage on the front and in the rear, but I needed to see this car in person to see if it really was as minimal as I had thought it was. Not a big sil- <laughs> Not a big silver guy. Why, what? Yeah. Dude, silver, white wheels, silver with just like mundane stuff. I think they'd rip. Keep the drift boys at home. No, <laughs> will you? You have a car that's white on white. That's it. Let's pull it out. I'll it's show you the damage. It's, 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 it's not sick. It's not good. No intercooler. Yeah, okay. Drove it, what do you think? That was the test drive. Sounds good. Right rear so, quarter damage, bumper it was damage. on Sebring, on the track. Owner had track day insurance. So you pay like 10% of the value for the day. It's a clean title. They're not real insurance companies. They're just a gambling company. Yeah. Pays you out, you just leave with your car, get your 140 grand or whatever it was worth and- And then he sold it privately. Sold it privately to his buddy. Okay. Sebring, scary track. You've driven Sebring? No. Scary. So here's the thing about this car. Is on surface value, it almost looks like it's just all bumpers and stuff, but I've gotten bit before where you think it's not that bad and then it gets worse than what you think it is. So we really want to just go through the car and have eyes on it before we like- Wait, something like that happened to you? Yes. What car? The Supra. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it had a grenaded engine. And but this one starts. Yes, this one starts. A little better. <laughs> feels a little bit better. But it's what's underneath this, because it looks like it's just fenders, bumpers, headlight. The oh. muffler is barely dented. This line is important to look at. It, it, it tapers, but it doesn't touch. This is overlapping. When you lift it, you can see this is just squished over this seam, and this seam looks original to me. And if right. you look at that one, at the other one, it goes like this. So they're both kind of like this. You can pull this one out. See how that one like is like almost yeah, at this angle. Yeah, yeah. That one, it's like it's like you just took this top layer and smushed it over. Like. And then on this front, Maybe. this is all cosmetic radiator bracket. This whole bent underframe right here, as we know from the 991 we're doing, I, that's all part of the fender. Everything outside of the tub is okay for me. Yeah. So yeah, like, like, like it, follow this line, everything, everything inside yeah. is good. Might need a new radiator. I feel like a Porsche professional now. Let's talk about one of the most slept on things you can do for yourself. Get it, slept on. And that is getting a nice mattress for yourself. Today's video is sponsored by Helix Sleep. Helix Sleep has been a proud supporter of this channel. And they've also been a proud supporter of my sleep and back pain. I used to have an old crusty mattress and when I finally matured and realized, wow, I should 
get a nice mattress and take care of myself, I went to Helix Sleep. If you're not familiar with Helix Sleep, let me educate you. You buy the mattresses online. That's right, you don't go to a store, you don't go in in person. What you do is you answer a quiz that Helix Sleep has, and it will help best determine which mattress they have is best for you. They also have a quiz where you can do it for two people, so if you share the bed at night, you can make sure you guys get the best balance, both of you. Now, I used to have a Midnight Lux mattress. It was great, it improved my sleep. I was getting less back pain than I used to, and I've recently upgraded to the Midnight Lux. Lux Elite. The Elite comes with some extra cushioning on top, extra memory foam, and literally feels like a cloud. I'm now sleeping even better than I was before, and now I almost never get any back pain. And what's great about this bad guy is when you order it, it gets shipped to you in a vacuum sealed bag in a big box. You don't need to go to a store to get someone to ship it. No, they just ship it straight to you. And all you have to do is you drag it into the desired room, open it up, cut it open, and over the next few hours, it's gonna inflate into the perfect bed for you. It's actually amazing. And before you start questioning, well, what if I get it and I don't love it? Well, they will let you sleep on the mattress for a hundred nights to determine if you actually like it or not. And they even have a warranty for 10 years and flexible payment options if you want that. And this reason the deal, they're having a 4th of July sale. You can get 30% off a Lux or an Elite mattress plus two free pillows, or you can just get 25% off a site-wide sale. You can click the link down below in my description or go to helixsleep.com forward slash TJ Hunt to take advantage of this. Thank you so much Helix Sleep for sponsoring today's video and now let's get back to it. As you guys know, Tommy, he's really a, a JDM and Skyline collector, but recently he's been really gambling in the Porsche world, which is why Tommy has this. Tommy bought this car because he wanted interior from this because he has a few other 997s of all different sorts that he's been buying and fixing up, and they're actually doing a lot of specialized stuff on Porsches, which I don't want to give it all away. So that's why he has this. And you said you have a lot of spares? So I just bought, a, last week I bought three GT3s. This one, silver 996 and a white 997. I have the headlight, the radiator, the AC condenser, the bracket, the gas door. I have like all the little pieces you need to make this corner good. Mm -hmm. right and how much did you buy it for? Which car? This one. Did you want to tell you that? Yeah. 65 grand. Bill of sale, title, clean title. So this is where it gets interesting. Ring of Trailer says that 997s have been recently selling at a medium price for around $130,000. It being a clean title, not a salvage title, means it's not gonna have that 20 to 30% depreciation value that it would if it was salvaged. So I think that we can rebuild this whole entire car and paint it for under 100 grand, which will leave us with a $30,000 profit margin if we ever sell it. But that's if there's no hidden damage. Honest thoughts. Tommy, I don't wanna say it. I don't wanna be the last person to say it, but I think it's a good buy. I 100% agree, that's an you easy, easy pull. I deal with these all the time. Everything that I'd be worried about with this car, which is the front tub, frame rails, the rear crash support, uh, engine support, all of that stuff, none of that's touched or affected. So all of like the core bones of the car, we don't have to touch at all. The front right, bumpers, bracketry, cooling stuff, AC stuff, headlight, taillight, all that stuff's just bolt on away. This is the only thing that's completely, totally outside of my wheelhouse. I'm not gonna sit here and be like, that's... dude, I, I pull cars all the time. Shelly knows what's up with these. That can get pulled like 88, 90% pulled with no Bondo. One, two, three, and this dimple, and they all kind of stop here and move out. And then even where this is rolled over, like Tommy was saying, it's truly just where the spot welds are on the skin of it. So whether it gets pulled or it's skinned, it's just a quarter panel. So I'm feeling pretty damn good about it. What do you think? You've been off the fly back there. Trying to not have my excitement overshadow, my excitement and emotions overshadow if it's a good buy. But I agree. I feel like it's good. And if he includes those extra little spare parts, it sweetens the deal a little bit. Well, that's the, I mean, the, to be honest, it's $2,500 worth of shit if you wanted to go buy all that. If you're like, I want the bracket, that we just bought all that for that car, which is a little newer. And this is, I think, non- Shut up, Sean. He's got Hey, hey, dude. Hey, dude. All right, so we have an offer for you. A cash offer. Put it in your pocket. Get off out of here. Okay, TJ, can you take me home, please? Let's go do donuts. Where? Parking lot. And what? GT3. With that one? Yeah, it's yours. Once you pay for it, you do whatever you want. Anyway, what do you think, Honor? I, I like it. I want it. What I, color do you want it in? British chasing green. Stop. The silver's so good. I'm not. Oh, white. Please I'm, I don't like silver. I'm not keeping the silver. Silver's like hella boring. It'd yeah, be sick to like make it, no, it no, UV purple you. and have it match the dot one. That's what I wanted him to do. With when I pitched this to him, I was like, you gotta go purple. I can't say if this would look weird in UV purple though. It, it, it'd just be different. I don't think so, it So I'll tell you my issues with the 996, 97 generation. 993, 964, 991.2, they have contrasting elements. They have black bumpers, black ducts. They have all these carbon things. So when you do like a weird color, you're not like, oh yeah, yeah, with these, they don't have anything contrasting except for the light, the lights, the headlights and taillights. That's why I think those weird colors don't work as well 
as they do on the older and newer shit. Like Don't paint it British Racing Green, he's gonna sell it. What, do you sell everything you paint British Racing Green? That's what they say. I mean, so far you've had the Vail side of M4, or M, yeah, M4. M4 for quite some time. <laughs> yeah. Actually, since I've been here, you haven't sold the Vail side or the M4, so do it again. <laughs> so I'll have my people send you over wire information. <laughs> that was just on me, what is that? Tick. Shut up. Well, I got it off me. Let's get the f out of here. <laughs> so what makes this one very interesting is the fact that this car was crashed on a track, but the car had track insurance. And the way track insurance works is you pay for an external insurance third-party company, and if you crash a car on the track, they pay you out for the value of that vehicle. But that doesn't get linked to the insurance that you'd have for street use. So on paper, this car is actually a clean title, which makes this a very exciting opportunity because we've ran into a car like this before. Now, that was our 458. The whole front end of that car was ripped off, but that car had track insurance, so it actually was a clean title. And when it comes to buying and selling used cars, if I ever was to sell this car and rebuild it as a salvage title, it does become a little bit difficult to sell because anyone who's interested cannot finance or get a loan for a salvage car you'd have to pay it all in cash. So the fact that this is clean title, it makes it very easy to sell if we ever get to that point because someone can finance the car still and there's no issues. So given everything that we've seen today, I was just reminded of the last time that I drove a 997 and how happy and excited I felt when I drove it. So I decided to take yet again another gamble on a crash car and I pulled the trigger on the 997 GT3. So we're gonna be shipping this car back to us in the next few weeks and we can get it back in the shop and fix this car as soon as possible. It's a done deal, baby. I have finally gotten my 997 GT3. I'm obviously filming this clip from home, but I wanted to reiterate something really quickly. I bought this car because I've been wanting it for so long. And honestly, I was really leaning on not buying it just because I didn't feel like it's maybe what you guys wanted to see. And when I caught myself having that thought, I was like, you know what? This is the car that I really want to do. When I drove the Ferrari F430, it just didn't give me the same feeling as the Porsche. And rather than making a decision for other people, I decided to make this decision for me. The feeling that this car brought was just unmatched and I'm really excited to have this on the channel and really just go and drive it and have fun. So I decided to pull the trigger on it and I wanted to at least express that to you guys just to clear up any comments or thoughts you might be having. I'm doing this car for me. So I'm really happy to say welcome 997 GT3 to the family. We've got a lot of work to do on you, but I think that it's gonna be quick enough where we can get a great turnaround on this fix everything in literally one video, send it off to paint, and finally enjoy this car. I wasn't really expecting to buy this car, it kind of came up out of nowhere. So if it seems kind of quick and very rash, it was. We just got back to Grant's house, we're gonna be spending the rest of the day here, because yesterday we were driving at E-Town, a racetrack in New Jersey, and tomorrow we're driving at some place, very, very cool, but I wanna keep that a secret for that video. But literally we have me, Grant and Matt Kaufman all prepping and making repairs to our cars today at Grant's garage. This garage you guys have seen plenty of times on this channel before and this is so cool. We got Kaufman, me, and Grant all doing some services. Nothing really too wrong but we just all have tires to change. We want all want to do bolt checks, make sure everything's nice and tight like Reed here. I'm tight boy. <laughs> and then what? It's trashed. No, it's not. Dude, Turn the camera on. Point at your face. <laughs> I'm just kidding. It's fine. You're an asshole, by the way. Yeah. Why? That's a, I don't like to change my own tires drift lap. What do you mean? That's a, I don't have to change my own. Just catch this really catch quickly. It. No, it's going to yeah, hurt so it, bad. Yeah. When you, oh! <laughs> when you burn a tire all the way, like go farther than you should, and you start to hit the cords. Start these, to hit the cords. That was 45 yeah, seconds no, you, prior. You hit a few layers of those, bud. <laughs> this was with you. You encouraged it. I, I was, was just watching the clip. These things are <laughs> so sharp and pointy, it hurts. How good does this look? All the boys working on the car. It's very cool. So I was sick. literally just yeah. talking about it. So sick. Clapped out E36. Clapped out E36. Grant, why don't you tell me what's going on here? I built this car last winter when me, LZ, and a bunch of other people went down to the compound and we drove these for a week. It's been sitting and the other night before you guys got here, I was like, ah, oh, let me go drift in the field a little bit. But then I got that thing a couple months ago. It's just been sitting a parts car. So Reed and I have literally been working on it all day so we could go tandem in the field later tonight. He has a big grass field up there that we used to ride pit bikes on. 
I they still will, do, it's just a little, it's a little, I'm never home. They want to do grass field drifting. I've only ever seen James Dean do that in like a 335. Yeah, so we don't have a big field like I've seen James do also, but, but I think still. it'll be enough to do tandems, which will be really cool. So I want TJ to sit in a ratchet look, strapped look ride. So we have a lawn chair. <laughs> Matteo sat in it, it was perfect. All right, I'm coming in. So, hop in the back seat. The back seat? Yeah, is yeah. that, there's other, no other back side. seat. Other oh my, side, there's oh a wide ratchet strap. In. For those of you who don't know, I've been trying to get Grant to start a YouTube channel for so long. And he finally did it and he does it all himself and works out of this really cool garage. So if you haven't subscribed to Grant's channel. Thank you, TJ. Go check it out. This is sketchy Are you ready? and I love it. Yeah, get in. And I love it. Reed, you want to sit behind me? Yep. Yeah, Reed, come sit behind me. Look, I can see the... F that, why do you think the nickname of this car is the Rot Rocket? <laughs> oh my God. Look at TJ, look over there. I think it's fine. Oh, all right. It's, it's called the Rot Rocket. I love it, I love it. I feel like I'm a part of Haggard Garage right now. It's, it's kind of comfy. So we just fixed a fuel leak on it? No, no, the other one. Oh, this that was yeah, the other one. Oh, this, this is the good one. one. Fuel leak, oh, this is the manual one. Oh. This is the manual one. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, oh, oh. Mowing the lawn down here. Look at that. We gotta put new tires on this one. The downhill section is so terrifying. God. You got it, dude. Less throttle. Dog, what is going on? This is where the day started to come to an end. We are prepping Selena to get ready for a drift event tomorrow, which you guys should see in a future video. And I just wanna say how proud and stoked I am to finally be a 997 owner. This is something that's been coming for a very long time and I cannot wait to get this car back in the shop. Not once in my life did I ever think that I would ever own three Porsches, but I guess I'm now that guy. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Peace out and keep moving forward.